If you like fast, dynamic, high energy, holographic imaging and sound stage, walk-in sound stage, uh, details that float in the air, drive. Hey, welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna talk about a glass room. We're gonna talk about simple magic in the form of the Enlium Amp 23R integrated amp. I'll also share my thoughts about moving from a crowded city to the middle of nowhere. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have something really cool for you. But first, before I get to that something really cool, the topic and the product, look at this. I have an audio, a dedicated audio space in a glass room. What the heck? Big, big windows here. Um, so some people always see that and say, well, how in the heck can you listen and have a well-sounding system in a room that's full of glass? Well, it's very easy. This room, I've had four dedicated audio rooms over 35 years. The rest of the times they were in living rooms. But this is the best sounding dedicated room I've ever had. There's no reflection issues. There's no bass issues. There's no issues whatsoever, which blew my mind when I put everything in here originally. But when I listen, I have very thick blinds, right? And they go down all the way to the floor. When I listen, all the way to the floor. This dampens the space and uh, it just really sounds wonderful. And I have a big rug here, this dampens the space. The couch and pillows dampen the space. I even listen with these up because I enjoy the view and it sounds 98% as good as with them down. But these speakers are very easy to place in a room due to their design and the conical horns. Again, these are the Fleetwood DeVille SQs. But today I wanna to talk about something else. Look at this little guy. This is the Enlium Amp 23R, known as an amazing endgame headphone amplifier that allows you to drive the hardest to drive headphones out there. But I'm not going to be talking about the headphone section because this little guy is also an integrated amp that drives speakers. It's very simple. It's very basic. Let me go over this quick before I talk about what this sounds like in here. I was running the Carry SLP-05, beautiful preamp. I love that preamp, probably being my favorite preamp of all time. I had the Pass Labs XA60.8s with this. So this is almost a 10K with the upgrade 10K product. These are something like 15, 16K, don't quote me on that, but they're in that ballpark. So you're looking at a $25,000 amplification system. This is 6,300. It has a preamp built in and the amplifier, not really a preamp like we imagine. It has a gain control. They call this a gain or current gain control here. Two inputs, RCA only, no balance, no HDMI. You're not gonna use this in a home theater. It's for two channel stereo, whether headphones or speakers. Very basic. So this is minimal. This is like very zen, right? It's got vibration, anti-vibration feet. I'm going to take this all apart, flip it over, show you the feet, and overlay it over this while I'm talking so you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a bespoke product. Heat sinks. It's class AB. This is not a class D amp. This is class AB, but it does run warm. Um, it almost runs as warm as the class A, but because the surface area is so small, uh, it doesn't heat up the room like the past labs do in the summer. And last summer I had the past labs in here and I love the sound, but the heat was excruciating because when it gets hot out there, um, this, this room is an addition to our house. There's no central air here. It has to be run with that. And you know you don't want to run that when you're listening because it obscures all your music that, you know. Now some of you guys might remember an older integrated amp that was a little similar to this called the Bakun Amp 13R. Um, that thing got rave after rave, and this is basically the upgraded version by the same people, just with a new company name, Enlium Amp 23R. This thing is solid, it's custom, it uses high quality parts. I'll throw up a shot of the inside as well. Um, and it replaced, for the last three weeks so far, the carry in the past labs. Now, what are the differences? 
I am running the Lumen U1 Mini streamer and a Dana Fripps Terminator Plus DAC. The Terminator and the Enlium go hand in hand. Synergy is key. And that's what Synergy, or that's what Hi-Fi is all about. Synergy at the end of the day, right? If you don't match your gear to your speakers, they will not sound at their best. They will not be optimized, right? And it doesn't mean you have to spend more money to get there. The Enlium Amp 23R is a better mate to the Fleetwood DeVille SQs I have here than the much more expensive um, carry and pass combo. So why would that be? Well, these speakers lean a little bit to the warm side, full bodied. If you put a full bodied preamp, like a tube amp preamp, and a full bodied class A amp, you're gonna get a lot of warmth. Some people may love that. It gives you warmth, drive, bass, uh, mid bass uh, fullness, right? The meat on the bones. But then you uh, lose some of those details. You lose some of the holographic sound. It all depends on the sound you want to go for. But because these speakers lean warm, if you add warm gear to them, they're going to get warmer. The Enlium, on the other hand, is a more lighter footed, lit from within kind of sound. It's, it's the most holographic and three-dimensional I've heard these speakers, bar none. But it does lose a little bit of that mid-bass heft and also not as full at low volume. But you turn this thing up to you know six notches or so, and I've never heard these speakers sound the way they do with this Amp 23R. There's some serious, simple magic going on here. And I call it simple magic because it's such a simple piece. And it shows we can go simple and get even better sound than having the spend a fortune. So don't always look for the most expensive piece. It doesn't mean it's going to be better. Uh, I, I demoed a $15,000 DAC once, not too long ago, a few months ago, and I didn't like it. I sent it back. I didn't review it. I was like, who would pay $15,000 for this? It just, but, but I didn't like it because it didn't gel with the system, right? Synergy is key, and we can go simple and small and get even better sound than if we put something mega pricey. Now, I've heard all kinds of amps and DACs with these speakers. I had the Nagra Classic setup, which in all honesty was the best I've ever heard them. The Pass Labs carry combo was up there. Maybe a little better than the Nagra because it provided more flesh, right? But I did lose a little bit of the airiness. The Enlium, on the other hand, is providing a holographic soundstage and imaging that bests the Nagra for so much less money um, and it bests the pass and carry in all the audiophile areas, uh, the 3D imaging, the detail, the hidden details that float in space as you listen. The Amp 23R is doing that uh, on a level that I have not heard within this system before. Now, this, as I said, is very, very well made. They ship from California if you buy one from the company. So you're not buying from China and having to wait there. Uh, they do ship from California if you buy one from Enlium Direct, which is what I would recommend, or unless you have a dealer near you that sells them, you could demo it even better. These are made in South Korea, designed in California, shipped out of California if you live in the USA. But there have been no corners cut. Um, I've seen a lot of high dollar amps and integrateds this is made with along with the best of them. I did a written review, 6,000 words. You can see that at my website. I'll put a link in the video description below. So go down to where the title is, click more, you'll see the link. I go into much more detail about the Amp 23R and what it did for this system and why I prefer it to everything I've heard with these speakers. But again, it comes down to preference and the sounds you like. If you like fast, dynamic, high energy, holographic imaging and soundstage, walk-in soundstage, 
uh, details that float in the air drive. I also tested these with the Clips Forte 4 and Heresy, and it drove those to incredible um, level. It drove those better than I've heard them as well. There's some magic. I call it simple magic in this little simple box, but maybe the box is not so simple because there's some circuitry going on inside that's providing this simple magic. Now, a lot of times people see my cables here. What speaker cables are you running? These are Cardis Clear Reflection. These are my long-term reference that I'm using. These are Cardis Clear Reflection interconnects, and this is a Raven audio power cable. You don't have to spend a fortune on these suckers. If you want a high quality power cable, uh, these are really good from Raven Audio and they're inexpensive, especially compared to the crazy stuff we see today. So the Enlium Amp 23R is something like $6,300 from the manufacturer. It's all metal, class AB, 25 watts per channel into eight ohms, but it will drive, all, it will drive many speakers as long as your room isn't huge. I have a 13 by 20 room here, 13 by 18, I think, actually, I'm sorry. And this is perfect. Now, again, synergy. If you have a speaker that's 86 dB efficient, a little bookshelf, you don't want to pair it with the Enlium. It's not going to bring out the best in that speaker. This is not going to deliver earth rattling bass. The carry and pass labs do that extremely well. But when you get that earth rattling bass and that big thick mid bass, you're going to lose out on the top end air, the airiness, right? The holographic nature. So again, this is providing amazing, amazing sound and sonics with the Fleetwoods and the, the Klipsch Heritage I have. Easy to drive speakers is what you buy this amp for. And it's all really that one would need if you just want a simple one or two input system. I just use right now a one input system, digital streaming, and it sounds phenomenal. I wasn't expecting this to sound better than the big guns, but again, it's synergy. These speakers don't require big power, right? They're easy to drive. Um, and again, it all depends on the sound you're looking for. And Liam Amp 23, if you want to stick with me, we'll go outside for a walk and check out uh, how it's like outside today. So Debbie and I bought this property in October of 2020 after moving out of Phoenix, Arizona, the city. And I was born in Chicago. Debbie was born in Chicago. We went to the same grade school together. We reconnected um, 11 years ago and have been together ever since. We lived in Phoenix. I've lived in Phoenix for 25 years or so. And Debbie and I decided we wanted peace, privacy, and uh, something besides hot and sunny uh, every single day. So we looked for a year and we found this property online. It was about 2,000 miles from us. We took the drive out to see it. We looked at five or six other properties at the same time, and we fell in love with this place. Even though when we looked at it, it was a mess. We have since taken out about 46 dead trees from an ash beetle that devoured all the ash trees and a couple other kinds. We've trimmed every tree on the property. We cleared out a lot of space. This is all new grass that I put in via seed crazy but this was all dirt so I had envisioned it to make it like a park like kind of property when people come up and drive up they all say that now this is like a park it's like your own park we have 20 acres smack dab in the middle of the woods and it's quiet it's peaceful we have nature we have all kinds of animals some that come up to the porch and on the porch, including raccoons, possums, deers come up to the front of the house. Uh, we have fox. We have, uh, there's all kinds of little wildlife that runs around th these parts. We have our family of cats that kind of was gifted to us with the property, but we love them all. And um, this place, 20 acres, 
of serene privacy um, cost probably a tenth, a twentieth of what it would cost in Arizona. Um, for example, the house we had in Arizona I bought 11 years ago. Um, $80,000. Sold it for three oh five dollars two years ago. Bought this place for two hundred k. Uh, taxes are low. We stay home ninety percent of the time, so we cut expenses of going out all the time. You know, everything I've done for the last twenty-five years, I've worked for myself for the last twenty-five years, and I can do that from here. We have gigabyte fiber internet, which is unbelievable, being out in the middle of the woods. This is our guest house, which I use as an office a studio. Over here we have a garage and carport. It's kind of hard to see maybe. And we have our main house that we live in over here. And this is a simple two bedroom, two bath, 1300 square foot house. The whole interior is made of wood. Um, it's very unique. It's very homey and cabiny, right? And we have plenty of yard space that, yes, I have to mow, <laughs> which is crazy. Debbie and I, one day a week, we do the trimming, the mowing, the gardening. Um, we have random houses like this on the property for cats, for shelter in the cold or rain. Um, more yard back here. We have a nice little trail over there. Cardinals are everywhere around here. Um, all kinds of birds. We have, let's see, we'll go this way. Uh, we are on propane, so propane for our heat, which has been nice. Um, our utility bill, for example, let's go to electric, right? Our electric bill in Phoenix, Arizona, in a 1600 square foot house was 450 a month. Using the same thermostat settings here, this is the audio room. It's the addition that they put on at some point on this house. Uh, so there it is right there. Um, but our electric bill in Phoenix was $4.50 per month. Just for the electric, no gas. Here our electric bill has never been more than $150 and is usually around $130. Um, so that's a huge savings right there. We moved out here also for savings, right? Uh, Phoenix was just insanely expensive, insanely hot. We had a pool which was insanely expensive to maintain. So we said, let's let's get out to some privacy and find some property. Um, so we're going to walk back here. We have something unique that Debbie and I um, fixed up a bit. It was kind of a mess. There's a pet cemetery. The old owners who built this place and they built it by themselves single-handedly in 2004. They did an amazing job. All their pets are buried and back in there. But Debbie and I put some mulch and a barrier that was laying around here and some statues. And uh, it's a nice little, when our pets go, we will bury them in this area as well. Debbie was on the porch the other day and she's looking out and she said, I wanna be buried here when I die. I mean, she loves this place, but the work, is insane. So let's talk about city versus rural like this. I was in Phoenix, we were in Phoenix, we came here to this rural middle of nowhere in the middle of the woods place. And uh, we have no regrets about that whatsoever. It was definitely, definitely the right decision. Even though Phoenix blew up even more after we left, I could have made a lot more on our house there. Somehow that $80,000 house, which was cheap as dirt in build quality, is now worth four fifty. dollars Unbelievable. Um, no regrets whatsoever. The city was always hustle bustle. I was always going out. We were always going out to eat. We were always going shopping. We were always going to stores. Um, always had to deal with neighbors yelling or, you know, things going on in the neighborhood. And here... We just sit on the porch in the evening, talk, listen to music on the porch. At night, I listen in the back. I've never had this kind of peace in my life, right? 
to me that makes this place more valuable is what I'm trying to say. If any of you out there have considered buying land, there are negatives. It's a lot of work, guys. <laughs> In Phoenix, we had a landscaper come. We had a very small yard and he would come and spend an hour trimming everything. We didn't have grass though. And here we do this all ourselves. So we learned quick. Um, we enjoy doing the work. And um, let's walk this way. It's kind of been a blessing, but the work is backbreaking. When we were taking down the trees, I thought I would never be able to straighten my back again. Oh, it was, I was dying for days. Uh, mowing takes about, let's see, if I start mowing this property at 9 a.m. and I include weed whacking, uh, all that kind of stuff, if I start at 9, I'll be done around one or two. So it's not that horrible. Um, though my mower can go pretty quick. Um, it is, I had to invest in a commercial mower for this property just because when we tried a regular homeowner riding mower, it broke down on the third mow. Guy came out and said, you need a commercial mower without question. So there's expenses such as we had to buy a commercial mower. We had to buy a side-by-side -side so we can get around the property we do stick patrol once a week where we pick up all the sticks that fall from the trees. We are on a well, so we have our own water supply. It's a spring-fed well. We're not reliant on, on any city uh, for a well. Um, septic. We have two septic tanks here, one for this house, one for this house. They get cleaned out every four or five years. We just cleaned it out um, a few months ago. Actually, the guy said we should be good for five more years. 300 bucks to clean out the septic. So we don't have to pay, you know, the city for sewage, for water, um, just electricity and internet. Um, so cost of living out here is definitely lower. Lifestyle's definitely more relaxed and chill. And while today, you know, we've been here almost two years, this place has shot up in value um, well over 100K already. And we had thought about selling it due to the amount of work. And then we, you know, we're like, where are we going to go? Where else are we going to go? We're not going to go back to a city, right? So where do we want to go? We looked, we looked in surrounding areas and little small towns and there was just nothing that compared to this when we're looking around uh, an equivalent or lesser price. I definitely don't want to pay more money because these days it's all about saving money. Oh, here comes Muscles. He loves the property. These are groundhog holes, by the way. That's another thing you can experience. Uh, Hi, Muscles. There's a story about muscles. One day I might tell it. So yeah, that's uh, the deal with this property. Uh, I think we found it at the right time. It was during the pandemic and everybody was, not everybody, but a lot of people, us included, were looking for privacy, space, you know, uh, rural, lower cost of living, uh, self-sustaining. Like I said, we're gonna put over here I don't know if I showed you this yet, actually. Let's go over here. We're gonna put a greenhouse up. Hi, muscles. We're gonna put a greenhouse up over here. Um, um, maybe two of them, I'm not sure yet. Um, and we're gonna put some fruit trees way down at the end of the drive, like a little mini orchard. But this old wood storage thing, we're tearing down and we're gonna cut down some of these trees here. We're gonna clear this with a brush hog and get it nice and level. And we're gonna put a nice long greenhouse here and uh, we're gonna grow our own vegetables and whatever we can grow to be more self-sustaining. Um, and that's the goal. When we bought it, I said, there's gonna be a three-year plan. First, we have to get rid of all the dead trees and all the garbage. We have to fix the property and make it serene and beautiful. And we did that with minimal cost. Then I wanted to make sure 
the house, both houses were all good, good to go. We had a new roof put on the main house, a metal green standing seam roof. Doesn't have the screw holes in it that will leak in a few years. So we splurged on the standing seam roof. It was 10 grand. Um, we put an all new well pump and parts in. That was about three grand. We stained the porch and sanded the porch, Debbie and I, and the boardwalk. That was maybe 400 bucks. Did it ourselves. We painted a um, few hundred dollars, did it ourselves. And uh, we had everything inspected and looked at. No issues. So um, we're good to go. So that's country living. That's our life now. We wake up and we have our coffee on the porch, or I do. Debbie doesn't drink coffee. Plan out the day, what we're going to do. And the inside of the main house is all wood. It's probably messy right now, so I won't show too much of it. But here's our little doggies. But as you can see, everything is wood in here from the cabinets to the countertops to the floors to the bathroom. Um, so yeah, everything's quaint and homey and we love it. So I'm gonna take the dogs out. You guys wanna go out? You guys wanna go out? Come on, let's go outside. So Debbie and I choose the rural life over city life, even though for a lot of people out there, there's nothing better than city life. It has the conveniences of everything close by. If you live in a big city, you can walk almost anywhere. We can't do that here. The closest services are about 25 to 30 minutes away. If we go grocery shopping, it's a half hour away. If we want a store such as Target, that's an hour and 50 minutes away. So we don't have the conveniences, conveniences but we do have fresh air all these trees here providing rich oxygen we're in better health from doing all the labor on the property ourselves we're in better shape we feel better so there's things that each scenario offers but for us it's definitely living out here in the woods um, no regrets I hope you enjoyed this look at our property and my thoughts on rural and city life and uh, I'll be back soon bye